Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today's guest is Canadian translator Elaine Kennedy. We'll get to know her, and then we'll follow up this discussion with um, a talk about her book, Under a Kabul Sky, short fiction by Afghan women, because Elaine was pivotal in bringing this book to the Canadian English reading market. Elaine, welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you for having me. I am thrilled. And Elaine, I am thrilled to get to know you. Are you ready for some questions? I am. All right. So what is the best thing about living in Victoria, B.C.? The best thing about living in Victoria, having grown up in Toronto and lived in Montreal my entire adult life up until two years ago, so being very accustomed to different culture, different climate, different geography, what I would say about Victoria is that nature is very beautiful here and it's very close at hand. So it's a flowering city. Um, there are blooms most of the year. And the ocean is a 12 minute walk at the foot of my street. So you can ride your bike all year long. Um, this to me is very, very inspiring. That's A. And the winter is mild. So there might be two days. This, this to me, of course, was a shock to my system, but I adapted very quickly. Um, snow might stay on the ground for two days. Oh. So it's very different and it's not humid. It's not, it's not humid. It's not these steamy July nights, um, you know, like in Montreal, there's a breeze off the ocean and that humidity is always being wicked away. So those are the two best things about Victoria. Oh, my goodness, Elaine. I think I'm ready to leave Ontario right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, you're a translator. So how many languages do you speak? I speak French and English uh, constantly. So those are my working living languages. I have an intermediate knowledge of Spanish, which I don't use as often and which I would dearly like to resurrect oh, so wonderful those three and um how did you become involved in literary translation i think i'll give you the short story <laughs> sure you can give me the long one if you want whatever one <laughs> all right so i studied english literature in toronto um, and then, um, not really knowing what I was doing, I went to France for a year and I registered in an intensive French language program uh, for foreign students. And I did that for a year and moved to Montreal, did a master's in translation uh, and started working as a translator right away. But I had it in my mind from the beginning um, I loved literature, I loved language, I loved translation, and I really wanted to put all of that together. Uh, but I didn't have any sort of a time frame. So I never specialized as a practicing translator. I I did a lot of work in culture and the academic uh, sectors over the years doing writerly translation. Uh, and at a certain point, I started um, translating short fiction, and I was, and I became um, actively involved in looking for a project. And I was at the Montreal Book Fair at one point. I looked at the Governor General Award um, winner and um, finalist for French lang, well, for French language fiction. And I happened upon upon this novel that I loved, and that was the beginning of it. I. Um, ended up over, you know, quite some, a process, quite some time of getting the author's approval, finding a publisher, getting it published, oh. and then, then, you know, that's that's how it got going. Oh, that that's so interesting because I didn't realize that. I thought that 
publishers approach translators. So I had no idea that you would be part of that process. Well, uh, you're quite right. I mean, publishers do approach translators, but when but when you're on no one, uh, oh, okay, and, and there's more than one way of doing it. So publishers will approach translators. What I have found partly is if you want to translate something that you love, you might want to be the person to choose that work. Okay. And see if it fits really well with a publisher. It's got to work for both, of course. Yeah, okay. Um, so what is your favorite genre to translate? Um, absolutely literary fiction. So novels, short stories that might have very unconventional plots that are character driven with a lot of symbolism, um, metaphors and so forth embedded in them. Um, interesting style, um, you know, a lot of uh, poetry. And I would add that within literary fiction, I particularly like the poetic and the political. Mm, okay. <laughs> and um, Elaine, what would your favorite day be? My favorite day? Yes. Um, I think my favorite day is not having to fulfill any commitment at any particular time. Um, I like having commitments, um, feeling that, you know, what I'm doing is worthwhile, but being able, it is a great luxury to be able to say at every moment of the day, what do I feel like doing now? <laughs> uh, and then, and then going on to do it. Oh, <laughs> sound um, good? It's yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah, I'm moving to BC and I want your favorite day too. <laughs> um, what's on your bucket list? I I don't really have a bucket list. I sort of fly by the seat of my pants, I must say. But I do have some things that I would like to do if I have the opportunity. And who knows? Um, for sure, I... I've never seen any of Asia uh, and I would like to visit some one or more parts of Asia given the opportunity. I of course would like to work on one or more interesting literary translations given the opportunity. Um, I mentioned my rusty Spanish. I would love to speak uh, Spanish very fluently, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Those are, you know, I suppose we all have things that we might like to do. Mm -hmm. If if the opportunity arises, those would certainly be things. And I think too that I would really like to work on my own creative writing, which is something that I'm doing right now. And, you know, we'll see where that goes, if it goes anywhere. I'm crossing my fingers for you. That's exciting. <laughs> That's really exciting. Um, what are you currently reading right now? So I tend to read a number of different things at the same time. Um, in terms of novels, I am reading, I've just started Jazz by Toni Morrison. I was on a huge, or have been on a huge Toni Morrison jag. Um, love her writing. Uh, I uh, recently started reading Knife in the Sky um, and um, Sunni by Naomi Campbell. Uh, a Naomi Campbell, Campbell uh, being a Quebec writer of Inu descent. Yeah. So, and writing in French. So. Oh boy. So you, you, you read in both French and English then? Oh, oh. constantly. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's just wonderful. What is a pet peeve? Um, 
bad drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You have them in Victoria too. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> okay, last question. What's the best thing about your job, Elaine? The best thing about my job is that after years of translating. Every project that I work on is unique. And so that keeps the job very challenging, exciting, and fresh for me. And it means that I keep to, I, I, I get to keep learning. Uh, and I learn so much from every author, every text I translate. It's like it's... They shift my worldview constantly. And um, it's a drug. <laughs> it's, yeah. no, a good it, one. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a good one. I mean, that's, that's the main thing that I like about my job. I really like literature. I like language. I like thinking about um, what I'm translating. I like thinking about the problems. Um, trying to work out the puzzle, you know, all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. So it, it sounds like a great job. <laughs> for Elaine, me, for me. Yeah, Elaine, thank you so much for answering my questions. It's been a pleasure getting to know you a little better. Viewers, please don't go away because I'm not finished with Elaine. We will come back and talk about Under a Kabul Sky, short fiction by Afghan women. It's published by Inanna Publications. Thank you so much, Elaine Kennedy. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. <laughs>